blue bot and a bunch of zombies here playing in Greece. Let's see how this one turns out. Uh, could be crazy. So, should be a lot of fun. Here we go. Round 2, Group 12 of the Poorly Played Risk Try Hard Open. These guys need about 10 points total uh, to have a chance to move through. Anything over 10 would probably uh, solidify them moving on to the Octo Finals. The top 48 uh, gets play in the Octo Finals next week of the Poorly Played Risk Try Hard Open. We're in Greece. We're with a zombie outbreak to start us here. Let's check out the map and see who has that best positioning. Okay, so potential island play there for Arco. I'm sure we'll get the player stats here in just a second. You can see how the bonuses stack up here in Greece. Uh, there's also an island play there for Pipe Rat King. Remember, they do have that blue bot, but the blue bot's not in the islands. Uh, so usually when you see a bot in a zombies game, that bot dies really fast because bots don't uh, protect themselves against zombies the way humans know how to. Um, so we don't expect the bot to last very long. See a position of Chris's gets cut out of the Dodecanes. Some early alliances being made. Maybe I can make this slightly bigger. Greece is a tough map to see all your numbers and stuff on, just the way the map shaped the small territories, the lots of water. That's just how Greece was made. <laughs> I think legend says it was made by some myth creature throwing stones into the sea and those are the islands something like that is the the tale of how Greece was made don't fact check me on that though <laughs> all right Nathaniel playing as purple he also would like an island position he's stacked up next to the bots that's going to be interesting to see how that works Okay. Here goes Arco. He's right in front of the bot in turn order, which could be a really good position for him to be sitting in. He could maximize what he uh, is able to kill the bot for in terms of cards. Yeah, so everyone kind of sees that the islands are going to be the safest spot. There are some zombies tucked in there in the islands. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. If they cause any problems in there or if they fully get taken out of this position. Here goes the blue bot. Looks like, ooh, hits a red two. It's a purple too. Fair game. The bot is going to be in big, big trouble here after turn one. No bonuses taken so far. That's most likely, I mean, it's partially due to how they spawn, but most likely due to these guys knowing there's a bot plus zombies. That's going to be breaking bonuses. Um, so you're really going to have to guard if you're going to hold anything. Chris just trying to get in a few different positions. Okay, let's see what the zombies do here and how hard they hit the bot. 
They're going to hit the bot real hard over on the left side. Oh, they actually go the other way. They hit Arco, and now they go through the island? Yeah, they only hit the one of the bot. <laughs> now they're hitting the bot up top. Arco getting hit the hardest besides the bot, for sure, by the zombies. Arco's going to have to really rely on his positions down in the islands. Uh, the zombies just completely taken over the top left side of the map. This is what we saw in a lot of the early groups in this round. Okay, can Pipe Rat King get a bonus? Probably hits the purple two there and takes the dodecanes. Yeah, he's going to roll the six on two. Then he's going to roll the zombie stack, which shouldn't be a problem. He gets the first bonus there. Just the Dodecanese plus two there. It's a hit from Nathaniel, but he doesn't get a bonus. Arco's in trouble here. Does Arco do go down to Crete? He does. He's going to take Crete. Maybe he can work out a deal here where he gets a little bit protected and holds Crete. He may be in an okay position there if he can additionally hold that top position. We'll see if he's able to. He does have bots around him up there. The bot is fighting the zombie, which is pretty classic AI, AI on AI violence here. That bot's going to be super weak. It's going to be an easy kill for someone here pretty soon. I think that was just Chris getting a, a card, knowing that he's going to lose that spot next turn. So the only bonuses go to Arco and Pipe Rat King. Nathaniel and uh, Chris still without bonuses. And they're in really tough spots. The top three players, the way the scoring works for the tryhard open, uh, first place gets you 10 points, second place gets you 8 points, third place gets you 6 points, and then you get 3 points for each bounty you take. So a lot of value in this if you can come in third place, you get those 6 points, and additionally if you can sneak in that bot bounty, um, that's a 9 point game. That's That should be doable even if you're not in a great spot. You've just got to beat one human player. Pipebrack King thinking through what he wants to do here. He likes his bonus. He doesn't guard it very heavily. But I think that'll be okay. He's just going fives everywhere. Okay, so Nathaniel does get his bonus. He's got a lot of zombies and the bot to deal with there. We'll see if he can make it work.
Yeah, Arco's kind of keeping those three positions. He's trying to decide at some point if he wants to go for that second bonus, but unlikely he goes for here. Yeah, he wants Red to get that out of there and move it up into um, the, the Attica bonus. He would like Red to move this three down out of this up into here so he can take this as a second bonus. But Chris isn't even getting one bonus, so I don't think he's going to be real apt to get out of Arco's way for a second bonus. We'll see. But Arco may also roll that. The bot is holding on to one, two, three, four, five, six total territories on the board here. He'll be worth three cards and three points after this turn. And he'll have less than six territories, most likely, after the zombies turn. Yeah, Chris doubles down, double downs by moving more troops down into the Cyclades and tells Arco, I'm not getting out of here, this is my bonus. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> he also creates a path for the zombies to come through to hit Arco. Let's see if they do. That would get very interesting if we see the zombies come down this trail. They're clearing out a bit of the Peloponnese. Nathaniel also struggling here. Ah, that's a big loss for Nathaniel. He's down to one position now here. The bot's down to two territories. Who can get those? Can Pipe Rat King get the... Yeah, Pipe Rat King's in position. Does he have enough troops? Even an early trade maybe to try to do it? <laughs> Surely he goes for the bot kill here. No? He's going to hope that it's still available there next turn, potentially. He's counting it out, but he's got a one on four down at the bottom, so he, he doesn't have enough to do that. He's hoping it stays around for another turn is maybe his thought here. He does, yeah, he, he doesn't want to attack Arco there. He wants to keep that positioning. He needs that line. Nathaniel's in really big trouble. He could have added to his two here and hit the zombie stack to move it in. But he decided he's losing that. And he's just going to try to hold his bonus. <laughs> no, he is. He, he built a five stack here. He's got to move that back in. He's got a three. He's hoping the zombies don't hit it. Arco in a really good position. Arco have been very fortunate not to have any zombies messing with him here. And the Pipe Rat King is successful in keeping Arco from getting the bot kill. Arco just fortifies his position. He puts an 8 here. Right in the middle of the Cyclades. So he's got a nice buffer from the zombies. The bot opens himself further up to getting hit by the zombies. Does the bot die here before someone can get the bounty and cash in? The zombies are going to take all of this out for sure. Does this live though is the question. 
Can Chris keep it alive? Yeah, Chris takes out Pipe Rat King's position here, so he can't get that. And he opens up the kill. I think the zombies get the bot here. I think Chris moving out of the way allows the zombies to kill the bot here. Let's see if that's what happens. I think the bot's going to have one position, and no way Chris gets the kill. It's going to come from purple. Nathaniel gets lucky, and he can come through this way or this way and get the kill on the bot. Orange no longer has that position because Chris took it out. Does Chris react by hitting a red position? Could be an option. If he is uh, upset about it, which who wouldn't be? Okay, he doesn't retaliate at all against Chris there. Red's winning this, you think, Chad? He has no bonus. He's not going to get the bot kill because Purple's going to get it here. <laughs> Purple's going to get the bot kill and a trade in turn. Nathaniel able to live through this early uh, chaos is impressive that he's able, he's, he guarantees himself at least third place, he gets a kill so he gets the three points, he's guaranteed a minimum of nine points now which is a great spot for Nathaniel after getting hit so hard by the zombies earlier but I would argue he's maybe in, mm. oh he hasn't guaranteed him, he hasn't guaranteed himself third yet sorry. He killed the bot. So has not guaranteed him he's guaranteed himself three points at least. Yeah, so Red's positioning, he's in multiple places, so he's very tough to kill, but those four stacks are not gonna be big enough when the bot starts or when the zombie starts growing here. So he's it's gonna be tough to keep that many positions. I think he has to combine at least two of them. Arco playing a very, very conservative game. Probably moves out into the island here. He does not. He's just holding Crete. He likes his positioning there. He's building a big puncher there in the middle of the Dode uh middle of the Cyclades. Yeah, Chris just trying to hold on to his multiple positions. He's got fives, a four up top, and a six over on the left. The other three positions are fives, and obviously that one he just worked off of. The zombies are going to do some damage here. Nathaniel's got an 18 stack now off of his bonus. I don't know if he can get that anywhere productive. Chris has kind of his stack smashed there between Nathaniel and Arco's position. We see the second trade of the game, I believe. Nathaniel's in three positions on the board. Arco's in two. Nathaniel's in two that are extremely close together.
Arco playing super conservative, just thinking he can wait it out long enough. At some point, he's got to start working on some positioning if he's going to go for one of these kills because he's so separated um, from Chris's position and that northern Nathaniel position with his big stack. Chris is also playing a slow game. He doesn't have the bonus, so he's got to rely on the uh, big trade maybe helping him. Giving him some kind of ground in the game. Nathaniel in three positions, and I think that's the most realistic option, is if you can do three positions. It's just hard to maintain holding any more than that. Um, and obviously Nathaniel and Arco working back-to-back -back here in the Dodecanese and Crete. Yeah, I don't think anyone's touching Chris anytime soon. I think Chris's problem is he's in so many positions that's going to be tough to keep um, growing those um, as the zombie stacks start getting huge. We'll see. Maybe it'll work. It just seems like a lot of positions to be able to do. He's kind of being blocked from combining his two southern positions. Pyoprat King pointing at red positions <laughs> uh, makes you wonder what he's thinking there. Could be defensively just thinking about what he needs to stay disconnected from. Arco's just slowly walking himself around. Um, but he's he's holding his one point guard. He's got a two point guard on his bonus. But it's only the one bonus. And then he's got one position up top. Obviously once we get to the big trades here coming up. Um, these guys will have a little more mobility to work with. But they've got the, the zombies kind of walled off in most areas. So I feel like that zombie, the zombie stacks are going to keep getting bigger. Yeah, I think Arco is in the worst position, potentially. Chris and Nathaniel are trading cards there in Attica. Yeah, exactly. His kill ability is, is what's going to be the problem, I think, for Arco. He's in a good defensive position, it's just hard to get anywhere from there without exposing yourself. You're gonna go through a bunch of zombies. Zombies up to 299. Arco goes thumbs up, thumbs down to Nathaniel. Wah. Or to, uh, not Nathaniel, uh, to Pipe Rat King. And Piper King gives the questioning like I am. I don't know what that means, Arco. You're too smart for us. 
Oh, he gives a thumbs up. Thumbs down. Okay, they thumbs up each other. They thumbs up each other. Wonder what it is. Did they message each other? I mean, did they emote anything else? All I saw was thumbs up, thumbs down. So I didn't see like attack a certain player or anything. Maybe there was something like that in front of it. Okay, orange moves down. He wants... He wants to further separate his three positions. To have the top position, the bottom right, and now he's got the the middle position. Which would keep him with decent access to Chris. Not great access, but decent access to Chris. Nathaniel and Chris continue to trade there in Attica. Maybe this will help explain what Arco was talking about. We'll see. Arco gets the 25 trade. Hey, there we go. Thank you, Pipe Rat King. That'll help. Now we can see some numbers. <laughs> Maybe Arco feeds Chris from the bottom. Okay, so he hits the six stack. And he comes across the zombies to hit the seven stack. That'd be a lot of work for Arco to feed it. It's not doing it yet for placement yeah because obviously you want to be in that top three you've got four players they all want to be in one of those top three positions at least um, and we get the uh, shaking Australia turtle from pipe rat king Same trade going on there between Nathaniel and Chris. Feels a bit like we've got Nathaniel and Chris in a 2v2 versus Arco and Pipe Rat King at this point. And then there's zombies. <laughs> Everyone just walling off the zombies. They're now up to 368. So they're not in danger of infecting anybody or anything. Still don't see, yeah, I mean, Nathaniel clearly, or Piper King clearly lining up Chris, keeping that in mind, but he can't do it without Arco's help. Or Nathaniel's help. Nathaniel could hit that six, it'd get real interesting. Troops wise, everybody's pretty close. Nathaniel's a card up on everybody. Because of the bot kill earlier. 
Obviously, Nathaniel, Arco, and Piperet King with the bonuses are earning more troops than Chris. Uh, but the trades are getting big already. The zombies keep taking back their two territories. Interesting that Nathaniel and or uh, Piperet King and Arco haven't found a, a potential trading position uh, where they can trade like Chris and Nathaniel are. They keep having to hit zombie stacks to get their cards. Trades are up to 35. Piperite King's on 69 troops, which should be enough for the win. If it were up to me. We get a few good dabs in there, that's good. Everyone's still awake, that's good to know. Okay, we do see a 35 trade there from Piperite King. Does he get wild? Does he hit one of the Chris stacks? He's he's counting purple. He's counting out Nathaniel. But he added in two different positions, which would be a wild way to play that. So he's waiting on it. Maybe he's thinking next turn. If Nathaniel doesn't have cards on fours, maybe what he's thinking. If Nathaniel does have cards. He trades in, gets the 40 trade. Nathaniel uses it pretty defensively, I'm guessing. He's been in kind of a defensive posture from the start when he got kind of a rough start. Um, and he's been able to come back into a nice equilibrium here. Still just trading there with Chris. See if Arco goes cards on three or no. No cards on three for Arco. We don't know if he had them or not, but he doesn't trade. He takes his same position, feels comfortable enough potentially to hold in that spot. No way Nathaniel makes that move on Arco, so he doesn't have to worry about that kill. Zombie's just getting very basic growth. I mean, the stacks are getting big. Um, you gotta hit a, you know, a 10 stack or more to get your card in most spots. Once again, we see Pipe Rat King doing a little bit of counting, but he takes his card and passes. Likely, his thought was, if Nathaniel ends up on five cards, I want to be in position to get that kill. But he, he did not. He had a trade, so uh, that was not an option. No kill opportunity here from Nathaniel. Nathaniel is count. Oh no, Pipe Rat's counting out Nathaniel's stuff. But the way he is placing him, he's thinking about yeah, clipping off some red. He doesn't take out the red seven stack. That's strange. He just uses it to guard from red retaliating. 
Okay. So Nathaniel clips off some of Chris. Chris is angry, but he couldn't clip off enough to keep him from retaliating completely. Did he clip off enough to make it to where Arco could get the kill? Arco happy to oblige to take the four cards if he can. He's got a split there, a nasty split to do. He's got to hit a 29 stack, he gets it just fine. Hits the 15, hits the 7. Arco gets the next kill of Chris. Chris finishes in 4th there, no points for Chris. Arco gets the 3 for the bounty, and we now know our top 3 that all get a minimum 6 placement points. <laughs> you guys disagree with the move there? <laughs> I think that's the risk of the the multi the the four or five position game is your stacks are small enough to where someone can start clipping edges without ruining their game. Um, obviously, it helps you stay alive early in the game. It's just tough. So, Ark was at 132 troops. He's on three cards. Uh, Piperat King cannot have cards here. He's only on two cards. The zombies are going to clean up some of this. I think Arco... He's got a 50 stack there pointed right at Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathaniel's going to lose everything but his bonus. Can Piperat King get Nathaniel? I don't think he has the troops to do it. He's got too many stuck up there at the top, that 22 stack. He doesn't have a trade. He can't do it. 52, 72, 82. Yeah, he's only got... 60 40 is on 82 unless we just manual roll this puppy <laughs> I hate there's uh there's all kinds of strategies out there there's a strategy that if you uh feed a kill and and you're still in the game he's right in the game still until this potential kill attempt feeds him No. Why? 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 Interesting. That three's not going to matter because it's dead. Piperat King hoping that Arco goes and kills Nathaniel first because of that. Yeah. You think he committed suicide by it? Um, it's possible he hit a little too much. Oh, he gets a trade on three, though, so he's going to stay alive. Can he kill Pipe Rat King? He doesn't. He doesn't even take a card. He, t he doesn't take a card to hide from Arco. The ki I mean, I think it would have been a really, really unlikely kill on Orange, right? Arco doesn't have a trade on three, it looks like. I mean, he had a lot more troops than Orange, but he had to go through a lot of zombies to get to those three positions. Oh, 
Okay, does Pipe Rat King have a trade on three? That will make this interesting. And if he has a trade on three, does he try to win the game? By hitting Arco hard. I don't think he does, but it'd be interesting if he did. No trade on three for Pipe Rat King. I think if Pipe Rat King had the trade and would have hit the Arco 42 stack and 34 stack, that would have been an epic move um, to leave Arco pointed the opposite direction. I don't know if it would have worked, but it would have been awesome to watch. Yeah, uh, maybe Arco doesn't have cards on four. That's the only way this thing goes any longer, right? Nathaniel trying to decide whether to take a card or not? Does it matter? Maybe slightly because it's a trade for Arco if he doesn't have cards, but he can't kill him without cards, so no, he should take the card. Hit a two and take the card for sure. It probably doesn't, it doesn't last long enough to matter. Oh, he goes and hits a Nathaniel stack and tries to go all the way around, goes for the kill. Sure, why not? How tight is this? Oh, I think he's got it. He's got the kill. Nathaniel gets the kill on Pipe Rat King. If he would have taken a card last turn, he would have a trade right now. Oh, Pipe Rat King did not spectate for us. That is unlucky. Um, doo -doo -doo. What do we do here? We'll see if we can get another one real quick. Again, reach out to SMG. Let your local SMG representative know that we would love a spectator code so that we could jump into lobbies. Um, we would love for that to exist in the system. So that we don't have little mishaps like this, uh, it would be really nice if we could just jump in. Uh, okay, Arco is killing Nathaniel as we speak. Arco is going to get the win. And so that'll end with Nathaniel with six. Pipe Rat King gets six, finishing in third. So Nathaniel will finish with 14 because he'll get the eight points for second place. Arco will get the three plus the three for killing Nathaniel. Um, and he'll get the 10. So Arco will get 16. A really solid, solid game there. We'll see if we can get anyone to talk post game. The post game chat. Uh, yeah, so Arco finishes with 16, wins the group. He'll be in a great position to move on to the Octo Finals. Nathaniel with 14 will surely move on. Piper at King with 6. I believe he was sitting on 8 before the match. Let me verify that real quick. See if we can see where he was. Sorry. <laughs> A 
Okay, Pipe Rat King was at 10 before. Yeah, so he's in great spot. He'll be at 16. He'll move on also. Uh, these are some pretty high scores. These potentially will knock out some of those 8-point players. Um, so we'll see them them falling by the weight side there um, after this one. Okay, let's see if we got anybody in the chat. Yep, Pipe Rat King. Pipe Rat King, how'd you feel about that? I hate feeding people. But <laughs> I, every, they had so there were so many kill guards. Every time I looked around, I was just like, "All right," I'm like, "Oh, I got a light," and I'm like, "No." And then, yeah, I I don't know. I feel bad. I don't like feeding, but it turns out it didn't do much. Anyhow, I mean, they could have gotten first, like plasma or whatever. But still, doesn't make it feel great. But sure, it happens. So you're you're. Yeah, and in a lot of tournaments together, like against each other. So I just like, well, I kind of know how he plays, so maybe I'll feed. How would you can... describe the way Arco plays? Uh, he, he plays just like any good GM. Okay. But I just I got more experience playing against Arco, and I well that and all his videos I watch. So. Sure, just kind of knowing his style. Yeah, and I just I don't know that most I gave I was like. It's like, man, I need to do something. I need to do something. I just couldn't. I could. It was either way too risky or. And I haven't had the best luck with zombies lately. So I'm just like, oh, I don't want to get too weak and the zombies kill me again. So. <laughs> Nathaniel, you want to walk was... us through your thoughts? Yeah, so I I felt really bad um, for basically helping feed Chris to Arco, but. Arco and I saw the exact same thing where I saw that he had really great lines on Chris except for that one top position. Uh-huh. So basically I just thought, well, this will at least guarantee me then a top three. Um, two more yeah, top three, so more placement points. And then yeah. I also thought that maybe by sort of doing that with him, we could build a little bit of like a rapport and stuff, and maybe we could then work together. Mm -hmm. Once it gets down to the final three, so that was that was just my thought process. Gotcha. Yeah, I was looking at eliminating that top position for a while, and I was just I, Arco asked me to do something, but I was like I was focused on the board, and I saw thumbs up, thumbs down, and I was like, uh, what? <laughs> I figured that's yeah. what I wanted, but I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't want to eliminate that position. I got I want to get something out of it. Yeah, on the on the previous round of trades before that. He asked me the same thing, but I realized it too late right after I had gone to fortify. I'm like, oh, shoot, could have done that. But then on the yeah. next round, next yeah, round of trades. Well, the having the, the set on three was key for you there, right? Staying alive. Oh, yeah, I I'm going to be honest. I didn't see that coming. I mean, it was, I guess, a decent move if I didn't have that trade on three there, because uh -huh. then basically that guarantees um, Piper at King more placement points. So props to you i guess for that but i just i had the set and i was debating after i had that trade on three whether or not to take a card mm -hmm. and i decided against it just because i wanted to make myself as unappealing to kill as possible because i was down to one position and a lot less troops mm. i thought you were gonna go for, i thought you were gonna kill me like as soon as you traded and i was like i deserve it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, you guys uh, GG. I was I was gonna see if Arco was going to go for it instead, so that's that's why I just decided to skip and do nothing because I just wanted to take a turn and wait yeah, and see I, what happens. I didn't have a trade on three, so going. Oh for, yeah, gotcha. So go, so going for either of you would have been risky, and because mm -hmm. and because I was doing the lions chat back and forth between both of you, I'm like, huh? Okay, well. <laughs> Now, now I'm in a conundrum. Which one? Yep. <laughs> which, we saw you communicating I, with Pipe Rat King, so I was curious if the same thing was happening on the other side. Yeah, I was at a conundrum of who do I, who do <laughs> I objectively, who am I objectively supposed to side with here? Because it's a tough call. And then Nathaniel just went around 
Ballot's Blitz BS'd his way through all the zombies <laughs> to, get the, to get the kill anyway. I'm like, okay, well, at least it makes that decision easier. Sure. Yeah, I, but, I was... I was originally just going to knock out his top position there and then just leave the bottom position for you, Arco. But then after I yeah. got those balance blitz god dice, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I actually have enough to just straight up kill him. <laughs> it's nice I, when I that works out. A lot more. Oh, man. And I'm so glad that seven zombie went to the right and not into all my stuff. It would have been bottom. really interesting if it went down, yeah. At the very beginning. Like, because I could, I couldn't remember the pathing if it went down around the edge as its primary path or not, and apparently not. Its primary mm-hmm. path was to hit my other four troops out beside right. it. Anything. That's why I'm like, I have. This is the one good bonus I turn one bonus I have, but <laughs> there's a lot. Like, uh. like 13, Man, was... 15 zombies next to it. Were you surprised, Arco, that he hit Chris? That Nathaniel hits Chris. Uh, that was, uh, I was doing Alliance chat around just to yeah. see if either, if, if, if you can get anyone to do it. Yeah. Here, yeah. 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 Cause if that never happened, we would have probably been there for a while until one of us had no trade on four or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, a little I... bit stuck in that position potentially. Mm-hmm. I I yeah. didn't want it to get to that state where like I had to depend on like a set on three or a set on four to survive, so I just I saw an opportunity to progress the game and I just decided to take it for the extra placement points. Yeah, that's what that's what I also figured the the point system might incentivize people to help me out in that aspect as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you guys are all in pretty good point positions to move on. Uh, maybe besides yeah. Chris. I don't know what Chris had in his first game. But um, you guys all, all three, Arco, Nathaniel, and Pipe Rat King, should move on, right? Yeah, should. Uh, I, I had 10, po- I had I 10 think, points. Yeah, before, yeah so. Pipe Rat King had 10 points in the first round, so he's at 16. I don't know what Arco I, had. I had I five, because my... My true random dice bounty attempt did not succeed. <laughs> oh, I thought you were good at true random dice. <laughs> and I went back and looked. It was like, oh, minus nine on an eight, minus ten on a nine, <laughs> minus thirteen on a six. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I got down to one troop because I won a four v six blitz, and then oh. I won a five v three blitz to lose nothing into a last attempt four v five. But it killed four and not five. Gotcha. So Arco sitting at put... twenty one points, which will be plenty. Yeah. Nathaniel sitting at twenty four points, and Pipe Rat King at sixteen. So you guys are all in good positions moving forward. Yeah, awesome. All right. What is it? Top forty eight. Top forty eight. Top forty eight, and we've got uh, three more groups tomorrow, and then yeah, top forty eight will go on from that. I apologize to your viewers. It was such a habit. I just clicked. Yeah, it and then, no, it and then happened. I'm, oh no, dude! It's like a reflex for sure. Yeah. We kind of knew what was probably gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like I was friends with like all these guys, so I was like, oh, I usually just hang out to friend requests. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude. oh, oh man, as I forgot. That's all right. We appreciate you sharing with us. You guys got anything else? No, I'm good. It was just—it was fun, guys. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm glad I didn't get destroyed by the zombies this round, like I have the last like four games. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've seen some wild yeah, zombies yeah. in this round. Yeah, well, in the zombies tournament, I did—I I did all right the first two games, and I just got the zombies just had my number the rest of the tournament. Oh, yeah, so horrible. Always fun. All right, well, thank you guys for the game. We appreciate it. All we'll right, uh, we'll see you guys in the octo finals. All yeah, right. Thank you. All right, that's a wrap on Group 12 of Round 2 of the Try Hard Open. Arco finishes with 16, Nathaniel 14, Pipe Rat King 6, Chris 1-4, one, 1-4, four, one, four, three, 3 finishes with 0. Our next matchup will be at 11 UTC, uh, Not s- that's 7 hours from now. So if you're watching this, you may not be in the crew watching that, but hopefully you are. Maybe you're in Australia. Uh, so you should check it out group 13 we've got three more matches tomorrow uh, to finish up try hard open round two we'd love to have you guys here thanks for checking out professional risk takers please like follow and subscribe 
here on Twitch and on YouTube. Until next time, everybody, I'm at Mitch on Risk. May your dice be nice. Uh, let's raid out here. Any good raid options for you guys? Uh, Oliver Spud, Oliver Spud. I'm just going to make a decision where to go with it. All right, see you guys tomorrow. 11 UTC is the next match for group 13. Be there or be square.